good song, wasn't it? Amen. Wonder this morning we asked ourselves the question: When the Lord sees me, what does He see? Amen. Something to think about this morning, isn't it? I was sitting back there, and she got singing that song, and I got thinking about you know, the Lord. Just one day we're going to see Him. Yes. And I tell you right now, what a wonderful day it's going to be. Yes, it is. Sort of funny though. She sung that song about when he sees me. And my message got to do with sight this morning. Amen. So uh, Amen. Guess, I guess I'm in the right note. Amen. I was wondering, you know, you always wonder when you go to preach, you know, am I going to preach the right thing this morning? Am I where the Lord wants me at? And I've got a little nugget. I, I've been teaching out of the book of John for a good while now in a Sunday school class. And, and uh, the Lord just seemed to... It seems like every time I turn around, I'm wanting to preach out of John. So I'm going to preach out of John this morning. John chapter number 9. I want you to turn with me and look at verse number 35. John chapter 9, verse 35. Now this is a very familiar study here in John chapter 9. And uh, it has to do with uh, Jesus healing the blind man. And, uh, and then he sort of turns around and tries to open the eyes of some of the sinners in the world. But I just want to—I just want to give you just a simple thought this morning. It, it won't take us long. I know, Brother Arnold, I was supposed to say that. <laughs> verse number thirty-five. Stand with us this morning. We read down through verse forty-one. The Bible says, "And Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he saith unto him, Doest thou believe on the Son of God?'" He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe? Now, he's speaking to the blind man here that he had healed. Jesus had done healed him. And, and uh, the Pharisees there, they didn't like the story that he told about how he was healed. And so they cast him out. And then Jesus begins, Jesus comes and finds him, speaks to him again. And he answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might believe on him? And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. And Jesus said, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they, they, which see might, might, they, might, they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with, the, with him heard these words and said unto him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, now listen to verse 41, If ye were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth in you, or remaineth. I want to preach on this thought just for a little while this morning. On 2020 vision and blind as a bat. Amen. And that's where we're at. You know, I, they, somebody said the other day, fellas at work told me the other day, they said, boy, you come up with some titles for some thoughts, don't you? And I said, well, that's about what happened here. They got 2020 vision, but they're blind as a bat, aren't they? Amen. Brother Arnold, you pray for us this morning. Yes, yes God. Yes, God help us. Thank you, Lord, for the standing yes. he made. Yes. Lord, for the stand that he takes with you and for the word that he loves. God give us yes. that word today. May we hear something, Lord, today that we'll carry home to us. Thank you again for Jesus. If there be one here today that's lost, God, may this be the day. May there something be said, Lord, to, to stir our hearts and minds. To make those that are saved, God want more. Those that aren't saved, to want to follow. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 You may be seated today. <clears throat> you know, I, I, we're living in a time, and even when, even in Jesus' time, we, we read in the Bible and we find out about the Pharisees this and the Pharisees that. And you know, the Pharisees were just a worldly bunch of people that had their own type of religion that they wanted. As long as it pleased them, they were all right. And you know, that's where the world's at today. And, right. and as I begin to read this and, and to study this chapter out, and there's a lot of nuggets in chapter number nine of John chapter nine. There's a lot of nuggets in there and there's a lot of thoughts. And, and, but I, you know, I, I begin to look and I see that, you know, we're living in the same society of people today as they were in those days because the world today doesn't want much to do with Jesus. Now they want to. They want to. They want to know that they want to think that they're going to heaven. They want to feel like everything's all right between them and 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 their makers. They might want to call it. But I'm going to tell you something. There's a difference in thinking that you're saved, and thinking that you're living right, and thinking that everything's okay, than it is to live it and know that everything's okay. 
And I tell you, I, I'm blind of a lot of things this world has to offer. I'm, a, I'm blind of a lot of educational things. I, I'm really blind to them. And you don't have to talk too high to get over my head because I, I'm not a real smart fella. But I, I'm smart enough to know this. I'm smart enough to know that when Jesus comes back, he's coming back for those that are born again. He's not coming back for those that are lukewarm. He said, because you're lukewarm, I speak you out of my mind. He's not coming back for those that think they're saved or those that hope they're saved. He's coming back for those that know they're saved, those that's trusted in him and gave their life to him, that's had their eyes open and they can see what God's trying to tell us here. Now, I, I, you don't have to be a very smart fellow to realize that these people here uh, were, not very, were not very close to the Lord. They were close to religion, and, and we see that everywhere we go. A lot of religious people, but they, were, they, were, they had 20-20 vision, but they were blind as a bat of the Lord. Yes. And, uh, and I see this today. The, the Pharisees, the worldly people today, they, you know, they, they, they couldn't just see how anybody could change a man like this was going, going on in this man's life. But they're blind to Jesus. Amen. And, and we got a lot of people today that's just blind to Jesus. They're blind to, to what he offers and what he has for us here. And, and I began to read this. And Jesus said in verse 41, and Jesus said to them, if ye were blind, you would have no sin. And you know, our eyes have been opened. Mine and your eyes have been opened. Yes. And we have sin in our lives. We, we, that we have to watch what we do. We have to watch what we say. We have to watch where we go. Because the things of this world and the things that this, this flesh does, it causes us to sin. He said, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, we see. Therefore, your sin remaineth. Uh -huh. And they, there's a lot of people in the world today, Brother Kenny, that's just, they're just blind as a bat. They got 20-20 vision yeah. to what things they want, but to the Lord, they're blind as a bat too. Right. I want to give you just a few things that, that we're blind of, this, blind of this morning. Mm -hmm. Just a few little thoughts that the Lord laid on my heart. Amen. And most of it come out of the book of John. And, but I want to give you some things. First of all, this morning, we're blind to the Savior. Yes. People of today are blind to the Savior. The Bible says in 1 John, I mean in John chapter 1, look at verse number 10. John chapter 1, verse number 10. Uh, verse number 10, he says, He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. We've got a lot of people in the world today that's blind to their Savior. Yes. There's a lot of people today that think, you know, well, I know Jesus, I know about the name of Jesus, and I know God and, and all this, but really and truly, do they really know Jesus? Amen. It makes a difference in our life when we can get up in the morning and start our day off and say, thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for seeing me through the night, and, and know that we have a Savior that's out there watching over us. Amen. And people in the world today, they don't understand what a Savior is. You know, just a simple understanding is a Savior is one who saves. Right. And that's what Jesus is. He's the one. He's the only one that can save. Amen. The Bible says, neither is there salvation, no other. For there is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. There's no other Savior in the world today. And people think, well, I'll put on my three-piece suit and I'll go to church on Sunday. Or, and that's all I need, just one, one lick a week and I'm fine. That's right. And I'll tell you something, folks. It's more than just that. Right. It's more than just saying, you know, I believe. The Bible says this, Brother Kenny, and I'm probably getting way ahead of myself, but I can't get off this thought, and, and it always, I've been meditating on this and thinking about this for the last few weeks, but you know a lot of people say, well, I got faith. I got faith. But you know what my Bible teaches me about faith? The Bible says faith without works is dead. Right. In other words, it's a dead faith. And a dead faith ain't no good. I, you, can say, you can say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, till. You turn blue in the face until the old fellow says the cows come home. But it does not matter if you don't truly know the Lord Amen. and put faith in it. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Where does faith come from? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And you say, I got faith. We never read our Bibles, but I got faith. We never exercise, we never witness, we never tell nobody, we never do anything for the Lord, but I got faith. I'm going to tell you something, folks. People are dead. They're blind to the Savior. And the Savior, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wants us to put action. You know, actions always speak louder than words. What did he say? He said, show me thy faith without thy works. I'll show you my faith 
by my works. So actions speak a lot louder than words. Amen. And folks, if we say we love the Savior, we really know we need to know the Savior. Yes. And I believe we're living in a time when a lot of people profess it but don't, uh, uh, profess it but don't possess it. I really believe that, and, and it breaks my heart. The Bible says in Luke chapter 2, I believe it is, chapter, verse number 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David, not a helpmate, not a friend, but a Savior. Amen. Somebody to save. Somebody to help us. God saw a need in our life way back yonder before we ever saw the need, and he sent a Savior. Amen. And I'm sure glad that he did, ain't you? I'm glad that he did. The world doesn't seem to realize they need a Savior, but they do. We've got people in our churches today that, that's members of churches, been here faithful for years and years and years, and yet never know the Savior. Never been saved. I, I, I can't remember I, I remember, I remember this, I remember Ronnie Simpson saying one time that he was preaching a revival in a church, and he said, church been there for years, pastor been there for years, and he said, I got up and I got to preach the preach. He said, I got up preaching and started preaching. And he said, as I began to preach, he said, God began to move. And he said, give an invitation that night. And he said, I never will forget. He said, I looked down the aisle. Here come a blonde-headed lady just running down the aisle screaming. Asked him, tell him. He said, I want, she said, I want to get saved. I want to get saved. Said a blonde-headed lady. Said she got to the altar, got to the altar where I was at. And he said, I never will forget. He said, I looked down. It was the pastor's wife. He said she'd been in that church all those years and lost without God. Folks, we got people all over our society today that think everything's all right. They're blind to the Savior. They're blind to it. They got real, really, real, don't really realize, Brother Bartlett, what it, they need in their life. And there was a pastor's wife running down the aisle and got saved. And I'll tell you right now, folks, we're, we've got a lot of people in that state today. Not only are we blind to the Savior, but we're blind to his death. Why did Jesus die? Why did he die? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish have everlasting life. That's why he died. He yeah. gave his life that me and you might have life. Amen. I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of people that's blind to his death. The Bible says in Romans 5, 6, says, well, when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died Amen. for the ungodly. Boy, in due time, we were without strength. There was no hope for us. There was no help for us. But Jesus gave his life on Calvary Amen. that I wouldn't have to die that sinful death. Amen. I tell you, there's a lot of people blind to that today. They don't realize that they're, they're here today. You're here today. I'm here today. We get up every morning and we go to our jobs every day. You know why? Because he gave his life for you and me. Amen. He died. We don't have to Amen. die. Yes. And I hope and pray this morning that, you know, if you're here this morning, you don't realize this in your life, that you'll realize it before it's too late, that Jesus died, that you don't have to die. Amen. John chapter 10, verse number 11. The Bible says, I am the good shepherd. You know what a shepherd does? He tends the flock. Yeah. But notice what else it says. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave his life for us, David. Amen. He gave his life for us. Look at John 12. Look with me in chapter 12. Look at verse number 23. John 12 and 23. The Bible says, And Jesus, said unto, and Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. Boy, just think of all the people in the world today that's been saved because of one man's death. Yes. Amen. And that was his purpose, that the whole world could be saved. I'm so thankful for that today. Amen. I'm so thankful today that, you know, the disciples, you know, over in Acts, in the earlier chapters of the book of Acts, you'll find out that they were there and they was all in one accord and they, they were in one, up, and they were in one mind and the Bible said there was 3,000 souls saved there at that great revival. And that'd be a wonderful thought, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it be wonderful to be in a service where you just see people just melting on the altar because they're, they're lost and undone without God? Brother Roy Goodson, and all you in here know Brother Roy. Brother Roy Goodson's dear, dear friend and 
And I, I could, I'd go home, I'd go to his house and I'd sit with him and Miss Lois and, and he'd tell me, he said, Brother John, he said, I remember when you'd have a revival. And he said, them old country revivals, he said, you go there and he said that the, it'd be so hot in the churches, they didn't have air conditioning and stuff. He said, and they'd just have, they'd have the windows raised and, and be sitting there with those fans and they'd be fanning herself and people be sweating. He said, I'd be in the pulpit preaching. And he said, I preached in the pulpit. He said, my, my underclothes be soaking wet all the way through. He said, but he said, when we give out invitation, he said, the altar would just melt with people. He said, people would just be coming. He said, it'd be, I, he said I've seen them stood, stand outside on boxes at the windows to look in the window to hear the preaching of the word of God. Yeah. And boy, I tell you right now, people they're blind to the Savior today, aren't they? Amen. They're blind to his death. They don't realize what it's all about. You hardly ever see anybody get saved anymore. You have a revival. Most of the time, people that come are, are church people. People don't go out and invite sinners to come to revivals no more. They don't invite them to come to church no more. You know why? Because we're blind to the death of Christ. We're blind to the Savior. Are you listening to me this morning? Not only are we blind to... The Savior, blind to his death, but we're blind to his resurrection. I want to give you this, just right quickly, in, in, in chap, Matthew chapter 28. Look with me these few verses right quick. Matthew 28. Look with me in uh, verse number 1. Matthew 28 and 1. Now this, this sort of stirs me a little bit, so if I get weeping here, while I'm reading this, because I just love the Lord, and God's been good to me, and give me a blessing. The Bible says, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord ascended from heaven. Could you imagine being in these ladies' shoes? The Lord ascended from heaven, and the angel of the Lord ascended from heaven. And came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Now I want you to get a picture of this in your mind now. Because this is all I'm going to do. I'm going to read this here. We're going on somewhere else. But I'm going to tell you now, when I read this, when I read this stuff, it just tires me apart. I mean, it just melts me like butter. His countenance was like lightning and the raiment white as snow. Listen to this, Brother Kenny. And for the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Uh -huh. What do you think it's going to be like when we stand before the Lord? Right. Lord Amen. God. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. What a day that's going to be. Amen. Now notice what he says here. Look at verse 5. I done got all teary out. I can't have a seat. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen. Amen. Thank God for the resurrection. Amen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. Mm -hmm. I've never been to the promised land. But everybody's ever told me that when you go there and you see the place that he laid, it just does something different to you. Mm -hmm. I could imagine it does something to me just to read about it. Mm -hmm. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before the you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to, to bring him his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them. Watch it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that, that, that they go to, into Galilee, and there they shall see me. Now when they were going, behold, some of the, of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all things that were done. Now, I don't know if that does anything for y'all or not this morning, but it sort of stirs me a little bit to know that Jesus says, he says, go tell my brother that there they shall see me. Amen. One day we're going to see him. Amen. And it ain't going to be in Galilee, is it? Right. It's going to be in heaven. I, I, can, I can imagine that the day that he steps out on the portals of glory and steps out on that cloud 
And we're here to shout, the trump of God shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise, and then all of us that's alive remain. If we're still here, can you imagine? We start up towards glory and see our Lord standing up there with his arms spread out. Now, that might not stir y'all none, but it stirs me a lot. I tell you right now, because I've got a vision of what God's got for me. I don't know about you, but I've got a vision of it, and I know it's going to be wonderful. I know it's going to be fabulous, and I can't wait to that day. Brother Jimmy, I'm glad I'm not blind to the resurrection. I'm glad I'm not blind of his death. I'm glad I'm not blind, amen, of the Savior. But also, I'm glad I'm not blind of the kingdom that he's going to prepare for me. Amen. Look at John 14. We just love John, don't we? Amen. I think I believe it's the greatest book, one of the greatest books in the Bible. John 14. All of them are great, but they just something about John. Look with me in verse number one. Jesus said, we said this this morning in our Sunday school class. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. God's got a kingdom prepared for us. Amen. He's got a place. And one day we're going to be there. And I just, I just thinking about this this morning. Uh, you know, as, as we get up here and, and in our Sunday school class, when we talked about this, Jesus, Jesus made it clear. He said, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again. And he said, in my Father's house are many mansions. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if I believe if you'll read the NIV Bible, it says, in my Father's house are many rooms. Yes. You might be going to go stay in Motel 6, but this old boy here is going to a mansion. Amen. 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 And I'll tell you something right now. They don't have to worry about nobody turning the light off because he is the light and he'll never be cut off. <coughs> Amen. In my father's house are many mansions. He's gone to prepare for me. Yes. And folks, it's going to be wonderful. Matthew chapter 7. The Bible says, I believe so, we're in about verse number 20. He said, many will say to me in those days, Lord, we not prophesy thy name. Thy name cast out devils. Thy name done many wonderful works. And Jesus is going to look at them. And the Bible says, Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is going to say to them, Depart from me, you that work iniquity, for I never knew you. Right. I'm going to tell you something, folks. If we could ever get a vision of the Savior. If we could ever get a vision of his death. If we could ever get a vision of his resurrection. If we could ever get a vision of the heavenly kingdom he's going to prepare for us. Amen. I, don't think, I don't think we'd have to ever worry about saying, Lord, have, have we done this? Have we done that? But we'd do this and we'd do that. Yes. We put action to our words. Makes a difference. Right. And then notice with me tonight, just said this morning, all we're blind to the kingdom, but we're blind to the faith. Yes. We talked about the faith a while ago, and I'm not going to harp on it much, but the Bible does say faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes. If you can't believe this word right here, you've got a problem. Right. You'll never be saved. You'll never be saved outside the book, this book. No way. Right. You can say, well, you know, I'll wait till I get to heaven. I'll wait to I'll, wait till I, I'll, I'll, I'll live the way I want to live and, 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 and roll my deathbed. I'll ask Jesus into my heart. It's going to be too late, friend. The Bible says he'll turn us over to a reprobate mind. We'll even believe a lie. I'm going to tell you something. He also said in Genesis chapter 6, I believe it is, or chapter, I think it's chapter 6, he said, my spirit's not always strive with man. Yeah. Brother Arnold, there'll come a time God will get tired of playing with you, yeah. and he'll withdraw his spirit from you. Mm -hmm. I've heard many stories of that. I heard a preacher say one time he knew a man that the God withdraw the spirit from him. He said the man would go to church every, every week to sit there and just see if God would deal with him again. He never felt it again. He walked out the door to last time and God said, that's enough. I'm going to tell you something. It's a dangerous thing. Yeah. The Bible teaches us it's a fearful thing to, to fall in the hands of the angry God. Isn't it? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. God hates sin. Yes, he, does. he hates it. Yeah. We're blind to the faith. And then last of all this morning, last of all, believe it or not, last of all, we're blind to the wrath. Yeah. I want to just share some scripture with you this morning. Look with me in. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, I want you to go ahead and open your book Bible to Luke chapter 19, chapter 16. The Bible says in Revelations 20 and 15, and the Bible says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If you're here this morning, you've never made your way down an altar. You've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart. If you've went through life and, and you think you you, you think you Fool, fool, pull the blinds over everybody's eyes, but you've not fooled the Lord. 
But you're here this morning and you're lost without God. The Bible says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. The Bible says in, in Psalms chapter 9, verse number 15, I believe it is, brother, uh, verse, verse number 17. He says, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. It's a fearful thing, folks. It's a fearful thing to go through life and, and, and unaware that, you know, well, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll get by. You've got an attitude of a lost person. You, you, you say, well, preacher, I, I'll do a little bit, but I don't want to do too much. You've got an attitude of a lost person. Because once you get saved, I mean truly born again, your heart changes. You have desires to do more and more for the Lord. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart. And we need to, in our life, we need to look and seek our life. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of people today that's just trying to barely get by. Right. And it ain't going to get you there. That's right. I mean, you, 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 it's like I said a while ago. Faith without works is dead. Show me thy faith without thy works. I show you my faith by my works. Makes a difference. But I want you to look with me in Luke chapter 16. The book of Luke chapter 16. Very familiar verse of scripture. You've heard the story many times about the rich man and Lazarus. But I want to read you something this morning that I think it, it, it ought to be an eye-opener for each and every person. The Bible says in verse number 19, says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple, fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. Had everything the world had to offer. And then there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores. Desiring to be fed from the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, more of the dogs came and leaked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. You know, one of these days we're going to leave this old world and God's going to just take us on up. The rich man also died and was buried. You know, that's sort of sad, isn't it? You, you, you hear a man that rich, fared sumptuously every day, had everything the world had to offer, Brother David, but he just died and they buried him. Just like an old dog. I had, I had a coon dog one time, died, I was buried it. You know, just think about it once in a while. I wish they had no dog back, but too late, she's dead. Yeah. But I tell you what, I got a mama that's going on. Yes. And I long to the day I get to hold my mama one more time. Amen. I got a daddy that's gone, and I hope and pray that he's with the Lord. Yes. And one day I'll get to see him one more time. Amen. I've got an uncle and aunt that raised me part of most, about, about half my life. And they were dead and gone, but I hope one day I get to see him. I never will forget, Brother Kenny, I had the privilege one day to sit down with my uncle. And he raised me, he taught me to hunt and fish and things like that. And, but anyway, I sit down with him one day and I always called him Captain. He always called me Boot. I sit down with him one day and I said, Captain, I said, I want to ask you something. I said, I need to ask you something. I said, if you were to die today, I said, do you think you'd go to heaven? He said, yeah, Johnny. He said, I know I would. He said, I went over to the preacher's house the other week. Sit down with the preacher and told him that I was lost and I need to be saved. Amen. He showed me how to be saved. Went through the plan of salvation with me. I never will forget that. I sat down and talked with the preacher. The preacher told me, he said, yeah, your uncle came over here. And he was lost. He told me he wasn't saved. Asked me, would I show him how to be saved? Amen. Won't be long, one of these days. Right. Says Virginia, I'll see my uncle again. I'll see my aunt again. I'll see my mother again. I'll see my daddy again. I'll see my grandmas again. I'll see my grandpas again. But only, you know why? The only reason that's going to happen is because I know I've been born again. And they've been born again. But I want to tell you something, folks. It's going to be a sad day. You leave this whole world without Jesus in your heart and your life. Or if your mom and daddy left, leaves this world without Jesus in their life, it's going to be a sad day. Yes, sir. Several years ago, my wife's daddy had been sick. And, and I'd go down on Saturdays and I'd sit with him, Brother Arnold. And I'd talk to my father-in-law. Old Buford was a hard man. He was a hard man, but he was a good man, hard-working man. I'd go down on Saturdays, and I'd work around his house down there and help him do things, work, put lawnmower blades on his lawnmower, just whatever he wanted me to do. I'd just go down on Saturdays and help him. But every Saturday I went, I never went on Saturday, Brother Arnold, without talking to him about Jesus. I'd talk to him about the Lord. And I asked him one day, I said, Buford, I said, if you die today, where are you going to go? He said, I'd go to hell. He said, Johnny, I'd go to hell. He didn't cry, I didn't weep. I said, Buford, I said, you, 
you're a hard working man, you're a good man. I said, there ain't no sense in you going to hell. I said, all you got to do is just trust in the Lord. I said, just ask Jesus into your heart. I guess after a few weeks, it got, sort of got to gnaw at him a little bit. I went down there one day and Sherry come home. She told me, she said, Mama said, Daddy had been down there reading his Bible a little bit every day. I said, well, that's good, honey. I said, I've been talking to him about the Lord and told me he didn't have to go to hell. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's an honor to lead somebody like this to the Lord. Yeah. I went down there one Saturday, Brother Arnold. Walked in the door and he was sitting there in his chair. Never will forget it. He always sit there with his hands on his arm of his chair, clapping this, tapping, tapping the chair with his hand, didn't he, honey? Every time you go down, he'd be sitting there and he'd, he'd get a little nervous. He'd start tapping his hand. Brother Kenny, I walked in there that day and his hand was on the table, on the chair, and I reached over and I grabbed it. I said, how you doing today, Pa? He flipped his hand over and grabbed me by the hand. He said, Johnny, he said, uh, would you show me how to be saved? Amen. I got the Bible. Reached through on the table. I picked up the Bible. And I went through the plan of salvation with my father-in-law. Brother David, I, I went home and I walked in the door. And I told my wife, I said, Sherry, I said, I just led your daddy to the Lord. Amen. What a great reward. Amen. What a great reward that he won't experience the wrath that's to come. Amen. That's right. The Bible says the beggar died. It was carried by the angel to the Abraham's bosom. Yes. The Bible says the rich man died in hell. He lifted up his eyes. Look what he says. In hell, he lifted, in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Verse 23. Being in torment. And seeth Abraham afar off and laughed in his bosom. And he cried, said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water that he may cool my tongue. You think hell's a place that you're going to party with your friends. It's, a, it's not. Amen. It's not. He dipped his finger in water and cooled my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise lad with evil things. But now he's comforted, and thou art tormented. Right. I ain't got to read no more. You know the story. And I can just tell you how the story's going to end. If you leave this whole world without Jesus in your heart, you can play church all you want to play. You can come, you wear, you wear the pad out on the pew, sitting there every Sunday. But if you don't get on your face before God and ask Jesus in your heart, you're going to die and go to that hell that that rich man's in. You might as well say it's reality, folks. It's a reality. It's a, it's a, it's a thing that's going to happen. But I'll tell you right now, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And I hope and pray that you are. I hope and pray this morning that everybody in here has got their heart right with God. I hope, you, I hope you're not blind to what God is trying to give you this morning. I'd be sad to be in a church and you're sitting here this morning and I, I know every face in here. And I can tell you right now, everybody in here has got 20-20 vision. But there may be someone in here that's blind as a bat. Yes. You, may hear, you may see it all. You may see us each and every service. But you'll die and you'll spend eternity in the devil's hell. The Bible says that inner parts of a fire, Brother David, in the inner part of a fire, it's pitch black dark. I don't know that to be exactly what they say, but exactly right. But they tell me the center of a, of a fire is, entire, is eternally black. And in hell, it's going to be black. Yeah. It's going to be torment. It's going to be pitiful. Yeah, that's right. Weeping and wailing and